Thank you. Uh, so, so we're done with chapter 15, which is on sorry, chapter 14, which is which was on uh, uh, work, energy, momentum for particles, and this this part covers the same things for uh, a rigid body. Okay, and we are only looking at uh, planar rigid bodies. So, essentially, this is going to mirror the chapter 14. What we did for particle, we're going to do the same thing for a rigid body. Okay, so let's define kinetic energy for a rigid body. So uh, the first easiest case is when the particle, uh, sorry, the rigid body just translates, okay? There is absolutely no rotation, in which case you can think of the rigid body essentially as like a particle and write the kinetic energy T as half mass times the velocity of the center of mass squared. Okay. The other case is when uh, you have pure, pure rotation, so this is when uh, an example would be a simple pendulum. It's fixed at a hinge point and uh, it rotates about that fixed axis. In which case, uh, I'm going to draw that here. So, rigid body, center of mass, axis, and the body essentially rotates about the axis. In this case, the energy, kinetic energy is half mass times velocity of g squared plus half times inertia about g omega squared, where omega is clearly the angular speed of, of, this, uh, of this body. Vg is the uh, linear velocity. Okay, now that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is is to find the inertia about the point about which the body is rotating. So in this case, it's O times omega square. So both these expressions are equivalent. That is, you should get the same answer no matter how you compute the total energy. So if you like computing the inertia, then you want to do method two. And the the, the general case is when the general planar motion okay so in this case the the rigid body rotates and also translates okay in that case uh, you are stuck with the first expression I written, I've written here half m b g square plus half i g omega square So what happens is, uh, the reason why, well, this is the same expression, so what's what's different? Well, it turns out that you can, in this expression, there is a relation between Vg and omega, okay? So that relation, for example, uh, for a pendulum, the velocity of G So a pendulum Vg, this is R, then it turns out that Vg, the vector Vg is the vector R times omega, vector omega. So it's sorry, I should write it as a vector. So omega cross R. Okay. So because there's a special relation between Vg and omega, this, this expression reduces to the second expression. So this one can be simplified to that. Somebody had a question? Yeah? The second, um, the, the three general planar motion, yeah. is the same as the rotation? Uh, no. So, so that's the catch. Uh, 
for a pure rotation problem, Vg would be equal to omega cross r, where this is the hinge point. Okay. Now, the case when it's general planar motion, so general planar motion is the generic case, and fixed rotation is a special case. So you could take this formula and reduce it to that formula. That is, okay, so this formula reduces to that formula if you find the relation between Vg and omega. Okay. Uh, the reason why you, the reason why you cannot write something like this, like you cannot write the reason why you cannot write that is because the point O is moving with a non-constant speed. So O might be accelerating. If O is accelerating, then you cannot write that expression which I written down there. So in that way, the equation is different. So why have I written two expressions? It turns out that you can reduce one of them to the other. You can take the first one and find that relation between Vg and omega r and reduce it to uh, the second expression. Okay. And the, the third one is actually very safe to use. No matter what the body is doing, that's always true. So for example, if it's only translating, then omega is zero, and so you get half mvg squared, which is basically the expression here. Okay. I guess we'll do some problems, and then hopefully it'll become more clear. Okay, so the other thing is work done by a force. Okay, the definition for that is U is the work done. It is simply the force dot with the displacement. And you've got to take the appropriate uh, limits for that integral. So example would be work of uh, weight. So that is UW, and that is minus mg delta y, where our assumption is that delta y is upwards and the force mg is downwards. So if you remember, I had written the same expression earlier for the previous chapter. Right? When a particle moves under gravity, uh, the work done is simply minus mg delta y, where the convention is very important. If you don't have it, so if your delta y is downwards positive, then u w would be positive and not negative. So the second thing is work of a spring, and that is something which I also had written last time. I'll call it US. It's minus half K S2 square minus S1 square. And this is true only if the spring is linear, if F is Kx. The last expression I want to write was the work done by a moment. Okay. Call that U M. It's uh, the moment M times d, d theta, and you're going to take the appropriate integral. So this is u f. Okay. And the work done due to moment comes in cases when there's a, a pulley or a motor. So there is a moment which is applied, and that moment causes the pulley or the motor to turn by an angle theta. And so if you take m times d theta and integrate that, you should get the work done due to the moment. OK, is that clear? Let's uh, solve a problem.
Okay, so this let's let's read the question. The disc, which has a mass of 20 kilograms, so this is a 20 kilogram mass, is subjected to a couple moment of m equals 2 theta plus 4, okay, where you can see that m is clockwise, where theta is in radians. If it starts from rest, define the angular velocity when it has made two revolutions. So two revolutions in a radians is how many, what's the, what's the conversion between revolutions and radians? One revolution is 2 pi or uh, 360 degrees. So it's 2 pi, 2 times 2 pi or 4 pi radians. So the question is really, there's a moment m which is applied to the disk and that m is a function of theta, as you can see there. Uh, because of the moment, the, and the, of course, the disk starts from rest. Because of the moment the disk spins, right, you've got to find the speed of the disk when it has turned by two revolutions, or 4 pi. Okay. So uh, again, in such questions, really, the, the, the way to do, to do this is, uh, free body diagrams, uh, find the principle you want to apply, it could be equations of motion or the principle of work energy. Okay, now it turns out that sometimes when it's a problem of work and energy, you don't require to draw the free body diagram. So like this is a, a classical example where you do not need to draw the free body diagram. And the, the way you can do this is to first think of what are the things you would need to solve this. Well, in this case, a uh, principle of work and energy will give you the speed directly. If you're told to find things like acceleration or forces, then you're stuck with equations of motion. So in this case, uh, I would try to seek what I need in order to solve this problem first. And then if I think in that expression I need to find some forces, then I will draw the free body diagram. Principle of work and energy. So I had, I had not written this earlier, but this is carry forward from the previous chapter where uh, Remember, I written down the initial kinetic energy plus the work done in going from 1 to 2 is equal to the final kinetic energy. Okay, And uh, this is clearly a, a problem of rigid bodies, right? It's a disk, it has a radius, and it has a mass. It's not a particle. So then uh, let's try to find the kinetic energy. The initial kinetic energy is, is what? It's zero because the body starts from rest. We need to find the final kinetic energy. Now, to find the kinetic energy, since this is a rigid body problem, you have to think of which of the three cases does it fall under. These are the three cases. So there is pure translation, pure rotation, and general planar motion. Okay, so uh, it always fits the general planar motion case. It will always fit because that is the generic case. But if you can simplify it, if you can reduce it to one or two, then it becomes very easy to, to do the, the math. So first try to see if you can apply one and two. If not, then go for three. So in this case, the disk spins about uh, an axis. Okay, the center. So it is a case of pure rotation. So you could use the first one or you could use the second one. In fact, uh, basically I'll show you that the first one boils down to the, the first formula I've written here boils down to the second formula. Okay, so there are two ways to write this. Either you could write it as half I O omega square or you could write it as half I G plus, uh, sorry, half I G omega square plus half m v g square. Okay, so in this case, what happens is, this is probably a bad illustration of, of uh, how those two are equivalent. I, 
uh, if you do the pendulum, it would have been better to show this. But in this case, it turns out these two formulas give the same, basically the same uh, formula. So can you see how? So what is Vg? It's the velocity of center of mass. Uh, assuming it's uniformly distributed, the center of mass is right here, right? Right in the middle. So what's the velocity of center of mass, linear velocity? Zero. It's zero, so this is zero. Okay, uh, so it's basically, this formula tells me it's half ig omega square. Okay, uh, now let's look at this formula here. What's the inertia about axis O? It is just the inertia about G, right? <coughs> So those two are equivalent. Okay, so this is one way where they come to be equivalent, where Vg is clearly zero, but and 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 uh, axes are just at the, at the origin or the center of mass. But the other case is a pendulum, where you can try to do a pendulum problem and see that those formulas give you the same answer. I don't think I have a pendulum problem today. Uh, no, I don't. But you could try to do this. Try to find the kinetic energy of a pendulum both ways. Half i. O omega square and half m v g square plus i g omega square. You see that the answers will be the same. You get the same energy. Okay, do that. Do that later. So the energy is half i g omega square. Uh, what's the i g for a disk? It is m r square divided by two. So mass is 20 kgs. The radius is 0.3 in meters square divided by two times omega square because omega square for omega is an unknown. So I get 0.45 omega square. Okay, so I have expression for T1, I have an expression for T2. W12 is the work done by the external force. In this case, the external force is the moment. So the work done is m times d theta. Okay, the moment is 2 theta plus 4 d theta. And this particular disk goes from 0 to 4 pi radians. So doing this, carrying out this integration plus 4 theta. So what I get is 208.18. And so it's just a matter of putting things in that expression. 0 for T1, 208.18 for U12. T12 is 0.45 omega square. And uh, solving for omega gives me 21.5 variance per second. Okay. So in this case, uh, we didn't quite have to draw the free body diagram because uh, we did not have to find any external forces. But sometimes you might want to find external forces, in which case you have to draw the free body diagram. Okay. So it's always a good idea to first think of the principle you apply to solve the problem, and then ask yourself if you need to draw the free body diagram. It actually doesn't hurt if you draw the free body diagram. It's a good idea to draw a free body diagram. Any questions on this? So this is a mass m is given an angular velocity of omega zero, okay, shown here, and that uh, omega is counterclockwise. If the ring rolls without slipping, find the angular velocity after it has traveled a distance of s down the plane. Neglect the thickness, okay. So uh, clearly, when this is given a spin of omega zero and kept on the plane, it's going to go downwards. And the good part is it's going to roll, which makes your life easy. You're going to find the velocity when it covers the distance s downwards. Okay. So again, this is uh, going to be a work energy problem because you're given velocities at some point, and you're going to find the velocities at a different point in in in. Uh, as a function of s, right? And if you see the expression for energy, there's no time coming in it. But time does come if you have uh, impulse momentum, but 
In this case, there's no time. So when you have energies or uh, things like that, when you have velocities, you've got to find between two places, then usually your best bet is to use principle of work and energy. So principle of work and energy. Okay, so again, T1 plus U12 equals T2. Okay, and we got to find each of those things, the expression. Uh, I'm going to write a generic expression for T and then write it for 1 and 0.2. 1 is when it's here, 2 is when it's at, uh, it's covered the distance S. So uh, the energy is given by, there are just three, where four, three fake, Three cases, pure translation, pure rotation, and general player motion. Okay, which case do you think this fits in? General, general planar motion. Uh, that's that's fine, but you could also use pure rotation because this uh, there's no slipping. So if you take the uh, inertia about 0, 0.0, then you don't have to. Uh, it's up to you. You can use either of them. Let me just use the general planar motion. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'll show you that it actually boils down to the, the, the other expression. So half mvg squared plus half ig omega squared is then expression for expression for the total energy. Uh, sorry, the kinetic energy. Okay, and where g is the center. Right now, Vg. What's Vg? What, what's the relation between Vg and omega? omega yeah, it's omega r. Then this is true for pure rolling. So what we get is T is half m. I'm going to put this in here to get uh, omega square r square plus i half i g omega square. And I'm going to just uh, simplify this a little bit. I get i g plus m r square omega square, right? Okay, so as I said, you could also do this problem like a pure rotation problem, okay? so. Another way is to say that the, let's call this point C, okay? C is the point about which the ring is rotating at that instant of time. At the next millisecond, it's that point C is going to change to the next point and so on, next contact point and so on. But at that instant, it is like ro it's rotating about point, uh, point C. So half i c omega square is the axis of rotation. Okay, now my question to you is, what is the inertia about i c? How can you find the inertia about i c? You can use the parallel axis theorem, right? It is i g plus mass times the distance between g and c. What's the distance between g and c? It's r. So if, in effect, you've got the same expression you'd got using the general planar motion formula. Okay. Perhaps it's simpler to use the second one, but of course, you've got to identify that it's a pure rotation problem and not a general planar motion. Okay. Okay, so the, we got the total energy, and what I'll do is I'll just I'll just uh, put omega equals omega one and omega two to get the angular velocity at two points. I just need to find w one two. So w one two is the work done by um, what the external forces. What is the external force here? Gravity. Gravity. There's no friction. Well, uh, there is. Friction, but the friction is it said anything about friction? The the friction, so even if there's friction, okay, there's not no mention of friction. 
if there was friction and if it was pure rolling, then friction would do no work. Why is that? Because friction acts at C and point C doesn't move. It's at rest at that point. So friction does no work in this case. Pure rolling, it doesn't do any work. If it's sliding, yes, friction would do work. It would be force of friction times the distance moved by C. So U12 is only the work done due to uh, due to weight. Now, in this case, you want to fi find the weight due to gravity. Now, here's where you might want to draw the free body diagram because you want to find the work done due to 1, 2. So, mg, the normal force, will it do work? The normal force acts at C. Okay, it acts at C and C doesn't have any motion in the direction normal to the plane. So work done by n is going to be 0. OK, so that's the free body diagram. OK, uh, if, if you, well, this is f, fx, uh, x. OK, so they have, uh, so the work done is f dot dr right so i need to take the force along so they in their convention s is this way positive is that way they've shown there okay so the only force which does work in this case is going to be the force which is acting along the incline the work done by the force normal to the incline is going to be zero because the ring doesn't move in the y direction so it's going to be mg sine theta so that's the force in the direction of s times s okay and in this case i'm going to write a positive value for the work done because s direction of s and direction of mg sine theta is positive is the same right because the convention is s positive is downwards so uh, having got that uh, all I need to do now is sub in the value of IG. IG is MR square. That's the inertia for a ring. So from 1, I have half MR square plus MR square is 2 MR square. So this is going to be MR square omega 0 square. Initial energy is that plus work done by mg sine theta is equal to mr square omega squared. So this is the final angular speed. So I, all I need to do is solve for omega, omega 0 square plus gs sine theta divided by r square. OK. Okay, last question. Oh, you wanted to write it down? Wait, uh, this? Sure. Very, um, on the second one? Uh, this one. No. Second. Like, go up. This one? Yes, the IG and then? That's the inertia about uh, G, or inertia about the center of mass, which is really O in this case. Yeah, because, yeah, so this is a continuation. Okay, so Vg is omega times r, and so I sub in the value for Vg here. And that's how I just factored out. 
So from here, I went down here and I put in the value for Bg, which is omega times r. It's the condition for pure rolling. 